In my Bible reading for the year, I've come to the book of Kings, which if you've ever read it, I think Mike Epley describes it the best. He says it's like watching this epic movie play out. Uh, it's this collection of incredible stories and miracles in this action-packed adventure about Israel hitting their high point and then spiraling out of control away from God. Now, this um, as they are spiraling away from God and, and uh, leading towards disaster, the storyline um, points out these two prophets that are incredibly important that stand out against the rest of Israel, Elijah and Elisha. Now, one of my favorite stories in the whole book is 1 Kings chapter 18. In the story, Israel has rejected uh, their God as the one true God, and they've begun to follow these prophets of Baal. In the story, uh, two of the most evil people in the entire Bible are introduced, the King Ahab and Jezebel, and they're leading Israel away from worshiping their God. And they've set up these um, these idols to Baal and these prophets to lead them. And in the face of these wicked people and these false idols, one man stands against them all. And it's Elijah. Now he calls all the prophets of Baal together to Mount Carmel. That's 450 men, it says. And he says this in 1 Kings. How long will you go on limping between two different opinions? If the Lord is God, follow him. But if Baal, follow him. And so he puts the gods to a test. Elijah directs the prophets of Baal to build an altar, and he does the same. And they both make offerings to their God. And Elijah says, whichever God answers by fire, that is the true God. Now, this, the odds seem extremely stacked against Elijah in the story. For one, there's 450 prophets for Baal. He's just one man. Uh, the prophets of Baal have the backing of the king and queen of Israel. He has no one. For um, the prophets of Baal, they have all of Israel's backing. All the people of Israel are following them. For Elijah, uh, he has a few people in hiding. But Elijah, in the story, makes the odds even more stacked against himself. He tells the prophets of Baal to go get water and drench his altar. And so it seems like the story, the author of the story is trying to make the point that not only were the odds stacked against Elijah, he made them more stacked against himself uh, to make a point. Now, in the story, the prophets of Baal cry out to their God um, from morning until 3 p.m. They begin to cut themselves, and it says that the story says that they limped around the altar all day. But the passage says that no one answered. No one paid attention. And so no fire came down. And the 450 prophets of Baal were extremely embarrassed. Uh, now with the odds stacked against Elijah, uh, it comes to, the story comes to this prayer that Elijah makes to God. And I want to read that and, and focus in on some application points that come from it. It's 1 Kings chapter 18, starting in verse 37. It says this, Answer me, O Lord, answer me, so that these people will know that you, O Lord, are God, and that you are turning their hearts back again. Then the fire of the Lord fell and burned up the sacrifice, the wood, the stones, and the soil, and also licked up all the water in the trench. When all the people saw this, they fell prostrate and cried, The Lord, he is God. The Lord, he is God. This prayer is in stark contrast to the prayer in the actions of the prophets of Baal. A few points that I want to pull out for us in this devotional. One, idols and false gods are powerless against the true God. Many seek answers outside of the God of the Bible, but when put to the test, when put to the test, they are powerless and they leave us wanting and disappointed. We must choose and should choose the God who is shown to have the power. The second point of application, Elijah was in the minority here. 
right? He had all the odds stacked against him. He was alone. But this story exaggerates that point so that we would see that even in the minority, when we have God on our side, we are the majority. God always wins. We should always have him on our side. The third point, the structure of Elijah's prayer is incredibly significant. He does not simply pray for God just to act. He does not pray for God to act so that he is justified and shown that he is right. He prays so that people would know that the Lord is God. What an incredibly important way to pray for us in this moment. And so in this moment, do not turn to anything uh, but God who has the power. And even if you are in the minority in choosing God, you in choosing God are the majority. And finally, when you pray to God in this moment, pray like Elijah. Pray that God would act so that people would know that he is the Lord, that he is God, and that hearts would turn to him.